welcome everybody to this radio. Thanks for being tuned. No, I'm bullshit. Uh, this is not radio, uh, but it's a really good song, by the way. So welcome to the Agora session number two. And thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. My name is Kike and I, alongside Sophie. Hi. We'll be uh, our host and your host today. We welcome Matty as well, that is going to be our tech master in the end, as usual. Thanks, Gige. So first of all, I think it's going to be wise to refresh everyone how the structure of the session is going to be. You're all going to be muted, but our chat is going to be always open. So feel free to ask any questions you may have and comment, because afterwards we will have our, our Q&A session. And today we will have a special, a very quick group session as well, where you'll be distributed into small groups. Okay, awesome. So, first of all, I'd like to start by thanking again everybody for your feedback on the first Agora session from last month. As you might remember, Ale gave us very useful tips on how to invest. So, we would really love to know if you actually follow any of Ale's recommendations and tips. So, here's a quick poll to test you guys and us, your hosts. Um, just Please vote while Sophie and I tell everybody uh, about what we did with our money during the last weeks. So Sophie, any advance with those investments or you just spend it again, partying with Andy? Um, why do you ask me this question, Kike? It's obvious. I went party with Andy. Okay, that's, that's a pretty good answer. Okay, uh, I'd love to say that I'm having dinner with Elon tonight. Uh, but that's not even near to the truth. I mean, matter of fact, tonight is Champions League night. So it's going to be beer and pizza for this guy. But to be honest, uh, I went to my bank uh, and I asked for the investment possibilities. And I'm thinking about it. Okay, Ale, if you're listening to this, I'm thinking. Uh, so thanks for this little push that you gave me last week. Um, and the conclusions about this little poll at the moment uh, is that most of us are a little bit scared for, for at least trying to invest. So maybe a 2.0 presentation from Ale would be a nice shot in, in the future. Don't you think so, Sophie? Um, yeah, sure. Well, thanks. Awesome, Kike. Now, let me introduce you our very special guest for today, Pili Paniagua. So, Pili is a health and fitness advocate. She's a nature lover. She's the mom of a 20-year-old boy. She has been working in sales and marketing for more than 18 years. She loves music, reading, where, going out with friends, and nowadays she loves watching the animal documentaries. She started with us at Athena, uh, as a BDM in the sales team, but now she's taking over our climate product. She's obsessed with climate change and human behavior, and she has always wanted to match her passion for sustainability with her career. So, Billy, I believe your dreams are coming true. Thanks for joining, and the mic is all yours. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for having me in this Agora session. So, um, I hope we all enjoy it. <laughs> so um, this is a net zero waste at home. And the first question we would ask ourselves is why net zero waste? Why, why, why are we talking about this? And I guess we're all well aware that we are, you know, going through a climate emergency, climate crisis. We're all well aware of the global warming and well, this is mainly or in, in big part due to the fact that we humans have uh, actually filled up every hole we've come across with rubbish. Uh, you know, we've put garbage, any type of garbage, like, you know, ranging from plastic, fabric, uh, you know, cardboard, everything that we waste normally, we've filled every hole we've come across with that. With actually contaminated land, air, water, well, 
we're kind of, <laughs> but yeah, we've contaminated even space, you know, space junk. Our space is full of rubbish. Now that's what we humans have done. But the good news about this is that, you know, recently we've, we've evolved, you know, the, the whole humanity has evolved from digging in the science, the physics of climate change and starting to think, you know, what's our part on it. And that's like very interesting because, you know, behavioral science is taking really huge steps towards, you know, modeling possible futures. And, you know, it's, it's not the same, like, you know, we, we behave one way or the other. Like we humans actually have a great potential to positively impact the future we're going to live. So this is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, so um, I, I'd like to talk about the net zero waste funnel. It's uh, probably most of us are familiar with four, five R's. You know, it's now, you know, it used to be three at first and it was four and five. It's, it's actually marvelous because, you know, you have like stages to think. We, we really need to uh, put mind, body, and soul to this. You know, it's it's a really good opportunity to think outside the box, too. So you get to, you know, exercise your creative thinking throughout the, the journey. So this is that that's something really good. So the first R is to refuse, and this is something like, you know, we real we really need to overthink what we need what we buy, what we purchase, you know, this is, you know, it's, it's an exercise of constantly be thinking what exactly you need. And after that, you need to reduce what you need. We need to reduce what you need. You know, again, it's it's actually overthinking about, you know, if, if we really need those things that we're going to buy, it's absolutely normal to seek satisfaction or pleasure and things, but we really need to, you know, switch that off and, you know, start looking for those, you know, that excitement somewhere else. Then, and this, you know, is, is like the funny part begins because the third art is reuse. And this means repurposing stuff. This is where you get to think of, really think outside the box, you know, whenever you find, you know, that item that's, you know, roaming about your house and you don't know what to do with it and you finally come up with an idea hey i'll use this you know piece of mental as a curtain and you know, <laughs> at the same time i'm like you know solving a problem i have because i need that curtain so you know that's this also of course involves gifting giving away like you know this this is something that you know we really again have to put our mind to like you know it's overthinking like we really shouldn't own things that we don't use. That's like, you know, it doesn't make any sense. And then that's the, it's like probably the hardest R, the cycle. Be, that, that's, you know, normally not standardized. There are, you know, many things going about in different parts of the world. And there's always an excuse not to do it. You know, they always hear, they say, why should I separate my, my, my waste? You know, if, you know, in the end, it just goes to, to the same dumpster. Well, we're going to talk about that afterwards. It's, it's no longer an option. It doesn't matter where it goes. You know, we, we need to do it. We need to recycle. We need to separate solid material from organic waste at the very least and the last stage of the funnel <laughs> I, I like thinking about it as conversion you know in, in the sales funnel it's like when the circle perfectly closes you know and just you know get the same organic material you know from the beginning to the end of the chain and to the beginning again it's when you just actually you know can convert organic waste into fertile soil that is awesome so uh, uh can you please oh awesome firstly i'd like to talk about food waste when it comes to wa to waste at all you know household waste why food i reckon this is something that we're not 
all super aware of, but one third of the food we globally produce, we humanity around the world globally produce, is, is you know, thrown away. It's, it's, it actually ends up in the rubbish. One third of the food we produce. That's, you know, it's an, an enormous damage. You know, the, the GAG emissions, the greenhouse gases emissions that that brings, it's, it's horrible. If you could imagine food waste as a country, it would be the third biggest emitter in the world after the US and China. It accounts for 7% of the GAG emissions we have nowadays so you know thinking about diet discussing diet is like a very good way to start you know towards net zero waste uh, okay so uh, just after this short but nice explanation uh, from Pili uh, we would really like you guys uh, to participate in this poll and you tell us Please be honest. Uh, so where do most of your waste come from? Is it from plastics? Uh, is it maybe from paper, uh, from glass? Or maybe you're like the cleanest person on earth and you don't even have waste. If this last scenario describe yourself, mate, you gotta call Greta Thunberg. Like now, go, run and call her. Uh, so I think we all know what Pili's waste is like, probably zero. Uh, but what what are all you, Sophie? I mean, what's your waste? From? Well, it's not a secret that I'm a smoker, so I'll probably say cigarettes. Um, I'm not a proud of it. What about you, Pika? Okay, uh, I would actually say from plastic. So I'm not a big fan of alcohol, so glass is not an issue for me. Uh, but you know, going to the supermarket nowadays is like buying tons of packaging with some tiny thing called food inside mm -hmm. uh, so and, and i think that that same problem that i have is like the most the, the biggest problem of everyone in here because uh plastics by what i'm seeing right now is like 71 of the biggest waste of everybody that's here in, in this agora session so wow. thanks guys thanks a lot guys from for sharing this and being honest it is a big problem Uh, so, Billy, so the mic is yours again. Awesome. Yeah, we can um, actually see here which are the main sources of the waste we usually find at home. You know, like we just said, food, paper, cardboard, plastics. We're going to talk about plastics afterwards. That's a huge problem. We all have something we're all well, well aware of, too. Well, textiles, yard wastes wood, uh, glass, metal. Actually, you know, if, if you keep on, on, on um, counting them, like we could go to chemical waste and what have you, but yeah. So, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not seeing here. So what to do? First thing first, we're gonna discuss diet because don't even mention the status. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk about meat. We can talk about meat after. I, I'm an meat eater, for instance. I always say that. Like, you know, I've significantly reduced my consumptions throughout last years. In that, I reckon it's because of the feeding methods they use. Probably, you know, it's it's like heavier now, like way much more difficult to digest. And and I, I kind of attribute uh, my 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 intake. You know, that that have reduced my intake to that. But but then again, because I'm a hunter, I really think I, I, I'll never get rid of, of meat. But, you know, that's something. It, it's a super huge emitter. We all know that. So each one of you who, you know, has a vegetarian diet, you're, like, you're making, like, really great contribution you know, to, to, to deter climate change. So, and, <laughs> but this is something, like, more tricky. This is another piece of diet we're going to discuss that, you know, not everyone agrees on, which is oil. <laughs> oil, for me, is the perfect example of food waste that has no sense at all, like, literally, but ruining your, your health. Because, you know, 
everyone knows, so everyone that knows me knows that frying is forbidden at my place. But if you still can't help it, you know, having those arepas, empanadas, uh, fried chips, or whatever you travel once a week, try to do it once a week. What do we do with oil? You know, that's a big question. I hope nobody here is just like, you know, pouring into the drain because, you know, that's that's really bad. You know, it's way much worse to let the oil go to the water than let it go to the earth. So if you have oil, you know, you, you can always get it in any non-recyclable container, for instance, that has a lid on it. Like, you know, I, I you know, eat honey, so I have this. I've also gotten one from my son. I don't buy this. You can also pour the oil here and just put it in the rubbish can and the trash can, the bin. Again, don't throw it away. Something really, really easy, if you have the means to, it's actually put, letting it cool and pouring into a plant pot. You know, that's the easiest way to do. The guys were sorry the guys were asking me like hey are you not gonna kill the plant <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if it's a <laughs> if it's a reasonable amount of oil you won't kill the plant if you got if you have a garden and a yard of yourself and you know, it's, it's way much easier you just you know throw it up there and that's it but if you can't you get any any kind of container with a lid it can also be the the, the regular uh, john jar you know it just you know you try to reuse it at first at least a couple of couple of times, I guess it is. And then you should just, you know, wherever, you know, any container you can open afterwards, you know, I remove from there. <laughs> okay, don't, uh, yeah, don't pour, you know, big quantities, big amounts of oil into your plants, please. And if you don't have plants, I really recommend you to have at least one. You know, they really improve your mood. They, you know, increase the amount of oxygen in the environment. It's, it's really good to own plants, at least one plant pot. So, <laughs> we've reached less is more. That's one of, that's my, one of my favorite statements. Less is more. You know, when, you, when, you, when we think about this stuff, you know, we think about how, you know, it's reducing you know, reducing needs, reducing things, reducing waste is, is always easier than, you know, having excess of, of all that. Okay, awesome. So, uh, guys, time for poll number three. And I swear to God, it's like the last one for today. Um, we would actually really, really like to know uh, how much water do you need when washing dishes you have just four options don't lie come on be honest i'll start by being like 100 honest and will say that i love that my dishes take their proper bath i mean come on i take two showers per day one in the morning and one in the night who am i to forbid my dishes to have their hygienic magic time what about you sophie well I would say I'm one of yours. I do the same thing because I hate like washing dishes and that kind of thing. So I say, okay, let's give them a bath while I do every, uh, something else like cooking or whatever. So yeah, I'm one of yours, unfortunately. Well, thank God our audience over here is a little bit more conscious than us. Cause yeah. like almost half of them uh, said they just say, I mean, I didn't even look at them washing dishes, but they just say that they use enough water just because they keep in mind the waste. So we'll see if that's true or not. Here I have a comment uh, from T that's saying that we should all look at dog washing dishes. I'm not sure if this is a great idea. I'm not sure in what <laughs> position uh, is dog right now, but... I think it's actually something that, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 I was going to say that we should all look at it, but I don't no. think it's a great idea anymore. So thanks, Doc, for being honest. And thanks, everybody, for participating in this poll. Bye. Do, do you use the same water? Like, you know, the same water you take a bath when you wash your dishes. Like, that's, that's awesome. Oh, my God. It's a great idea. <laughs> 
So, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, the best way to wash dishes. First of all, if you like your shiny, cuddly, the only thing you need to do is just dry them. <laughs> you don't need to spend, like, lots of water and, 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 and detergent or anything. You just dry them with a cloth, and that's it. I read this when reading about the one percentage improvements. You know, we all love seeing our cuddly shiny. You just need to dry it. And the first, the best way to, to, you know, to avoid spending a lot of water is just, you know, first close the tap, wash all the dishes, you know, without water, just, you know, the least amount you can take to, you know, have those bubbles and make, you know, make sure you're really cleaning your, your dishes. And then, you know, you open the tap and you rinse them all together. That's the way you know you, you avoid spending. There are lots, lots of, of, of habits we, we really need to think about, you know, also about electricity, of course. How much do we rely on air conditioning and microwave? Well, we probably could, you know, be good without them. And here's where we can you please uh, move forward? Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, actually, yeah, when we moved to plastics, I was just thinking about that because that this is something that we really, you know, need to think about but when we clean also, you know, we definitely make a lot of waste there. You know, not only because of the amount of detergent or bleach you use and, you know, throw to, into the water, but also because, you know, they're, <laughs> they're like, Two great allies to clean your house, which are white vinegar, alcohol vinegar, and baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. I don't know how you call it, but <laughs> that's a baking soda. That's like two great allies. You know, you get like fabric softener, grease remover, you know, just forget about, you know, buying those horrible things that are actually super toxic to you know those magic oven cleaners i almost bought that because my friend asked me to she said okay come on you're not gonna believe it you just spray it and your oven is you know magically cleaned that's not true cleaning the oven is a very hard task but then again you know when you get for instance the, the um the stove like you just you can easily clean that with um, vinegar it's the best grease remover that you know exists and that's where we go to the purchasing habits and that's where the the plastic is it's is a huge horrible horrible problem we have so this is something that we also need to reflect on do we uh prioritize time and go and buy everything in the supermarket for instance because that's, you know, a huge waste emitter. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. Like, you know, I do buy things like news and in, in wholesale stores. So, for instance, this is my, my baking soda. Like, I don't get more plastic than that. Think about rice, lentils. All that can be purchased in a wholesale uh, food store. So you get only this tiny plastic bags that you can pick up your pet's poop with, you know, you use it for that. Same with cleaning. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, you're going to use vinegar and baking soda and get rid of detergent and bleach, of course not, but you can buy them in these containers, you know, also specialized stores that they do uh, only sell cleaning materials. And then, you know, you just reuse it. You take it back, they give you another one, they reuse it. Even if you can't go without these, you know, because, of, I mean, I live in Argentina, Buenos Aires, and we all, everyone that lives here, you know, I, I don't think that you can definitely get rid of these because you still get them, but it's okay. You just use it for your garbage. I mean, you know, you just, because if you do, if you take all the steps you need to take, you should really go about with like just a couple of these with rubbish per week. That's all, you know, if, if, you, if you take the time to, you know, separate your, your waste and think what you consume and what you keep, that's, you know, the, the outcome that we should get. 
So, um, and that's, you know, where we go to recycling or not. And, and that is not a question. That's, that's no longer a question. You know, I get all these answers like, you know, I, I started uh, talking about, listen, plastic is such a huge problem. This is something I, uh, you know, some of us read about a, a couple of weeks ago that, you know, most of the fish and sea turtle have their stomachs filled in with microplastics. And recent discoveries, you know, scientists have found microplastics in humans' blood now. So That's it's not... Scary. Yeah, it's it's no longer one organ. Like it's you know, it just they just made their way to a blood current. Wow. Like, you know, so that that's a big problem we have. So why, you know, why do we still? Need, yeah, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. You know, because of that, probably nothing. Probably we are already experiencing the outcome of that now because you know this has been going on for for a couple of years now, but then. That's where we always need to think like how, you know, at the very first time, first of all, you know, before buying it. Uh, you're going to make somebody's life easier because at some point it needs to be separated. There are plants that, need, that you know, that do that. People who are working on separating the trash because all these landfills filled up with trash. You know, people who live nearby, you're going to help people who live nearby their health is going to improve. You know, if you just take that time, because anything that goes to the soil, it just emits. And we all know what happens with that. So, uh, can we please move forward? Oh, to the last step of the funnel, the conversion. Um, I know composting is not for everyone. Like I said, um, it's, it's, it's not terrible that you go about with, with a couple of, of small bags of rubbish per week. You know, I use, I, I tend to use like small containers for, for, you know, as trash cans. I, I never have like a trash can. I don't buy things. I'm not, I'm not a good, <laughs> I'm not, no good to buy in buying things. So, you know, after this, I know Kike shared that he, he has a friend that, that builds this uh, composting bins for anyone who, who wants to purchase them. But what I do is just, for, if I come across any kind of, of, for instance, look at this. I bought avocados with a friend and, you know, I just got this. It's, it's, it's not a very useful thing. But then again, you use any kind of, you know, shading mesh or, you know, any porous fabric you have and you put it inside there and you, you, you have a composting bin. I do compost, you know, the, the most likely thing that happens is that whenever you throw some seeds, you get tomato, <laughs> pumpkin growing in there, you know, whatever you throw, you get some of that, which is also awesome. Some, you know, depending on how big the bin is, you get to eat them. And uh, then I also understand I have a, a friend of mine who owns a house, a big house with a backyard. I know, you know, if you compost in the open, it's it's quite like, you know, it's quite possible that rats, or any kind of rodents, might swing by for a meal of decomposed food. But so maybe, you know, it's it's sometimes easier to have it indoors, you know, with a bin that you can buy. That there are many people that are now, you know, building bins to compost because this, this is something, uh, yeah, pretty pretty normal now, pretty common. So, <laughs> and yeah, you know, even the IPCC, you know, the Intergovernmental Pana Panel for Climate Change that people in the UN who can normally frightens us, you know, their last report you know, stresses again the importance of human behavior in, 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 in this outcome. So for me, it's, it's like, you know, really, I've been living like this for a while now. And, you know, I'm seeing the results, you know, I'm seeing, you know, people around me that, that has started to recycle, to separate waste, to uh, think about what they buy. And, and, and that's, that's awesome. So, you know, being able to see that, it, it really, you know, I have no doubt 
that that our behavior can can definitely make a positive impact. So, so we're all, most of us are well familiar with the power of atomic habits, and and this is it. This is just, these are just more habits, more good habits that you need to cultivate. And the result of, of that is is always awesome. <laughs> so yeah, that's something that we might want to reflect about I, I like me myself i like making commitments like you know i speak in the present tense even if i still haven't started for instance like you know i'm on a diet <laughs> i always go like that yeah i've started my diet and even though you know i'm i know i'm, I'm still not there you know i'm planning to do it on monday but i just you know speak in the present tense and that's the way you know I say, and, and share it with others and that's some kind of pressure that you know you create for yourself and, and you can start doing things better yeah sure <clears throat> okay Billy, that was great amazing tips really useful um thanks for the presentation and now as i told you before um we can only achieve a net zero waste life by changing our daily habits, right? So a great way to do, so it's like saying it out loud, um, we need to declare our intentions. So now we will have a very quick group session where you'll be distributed into very small groups of about three or four participants in alphabetical order. So the idea here is for everyone to tell in your groups, if you're already doing any of these tips or things that Billy told us today, or uh, with what you would like to start. So make sure to make it quick so everyone has a chance to speak. And well, let's go. The garbage is going to uh, end up in the same place. And okay, no, I think that we can give it a try and we can change these, these habits. And it's actually very cool. And it's, it's uh, I think it's a beautiful lifestyle. So I don't know. Okay, awesome. Thank, thanks for sharing this with us, uh, Vicky. I think you deserve a big clap from everybody, a silent clap from, from everybody. That's it. Thank you. Uh, and the last, the last one that I wanted to, to ask this is uh, Doc. So please, Doc, if you can share, uh, if you have the, the, what it takes to share with us uh, what you discussed in the group, what are you doing? And then I have another second question for you as well, but that's going to be later. So if you'd like to share something. Um, yeah, T and I had a pretty good routine in Australia. Um, but as Vicky said, we, we talked earlier, it's been a little bit more difficult for us here, just getting systems and processes around like how we think about this stuff. Um, I also would like to share in the, in the chat in a moment, um, there's a really cool app that I have downloaded. It's called um, One Small Step. Pilly actually met with them last night. It's a startup that I was mentoring at Startmate. They're really cool. They do behavioral, they do um, tracking for your, your um, footprint, sustainability and so forth. And they help you make little behavioral changes and like quantify your, your, your footprint. And I've just put it in the chat. I'll share it in a, in a sec. Um, I want to start using that to be better, um, mainly because it's an awesome app. I have a personal connection with the founder um, and it's really, yeah, it's really useful. Uh, but yeah, we're not super right now. We need to get better. Um, and today's a good reminder, I guess, from, uh, from Pili and, and from the Agora session. So what was your other question, Kike? Uh, my other question was uh, was not is if you can actually clarify your situation while you're washing dishes. I mean, <laughs> we have I something. Them the bath. I wash them in the oh, bath, boy. like was mentioned earlier. <laughs> boy, it saves water, Kike. It's, uh, it's. I mean, it's a sustainable it's, way. <laughs> it's a super sustainable. <laughs> arguable way uh, <laughs> but it's, it's a nice way anyway so yeah, maybe something from, from australia i mean <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah okay so awesome thanks thanks doc for sharing so guys now is uh, time for q's nays uh we have uh, uh, a couple of questions so i'll start billy please unmute yourself um, the first question was from T. 
uh, if uh, and she was not asking only Billy, she was asking everybody in the chat uh, if anyone uses uh, reusable toilet paper. Um, I mean, some some of us can actually draw a line like 15 miles before using reusable toilet paper. And some of others can actually use them. Uh, so, Pili, can you please um, give us your thought about this? Yeah, I have no clue about recyclable paper. I reckon I I would definitely use it. Uh, you know, I'm I I you know who gives a crap comes to mind too. It, it's it's a very interesting thing about. I always talk about toilet paper. It's pretty much like meat. I know there will come a time when we won't be able to choose that we will all have to eat plant based meat because that's the only. Uh, so, plant-based food which you know resembles me because that's the only sustainable option and probably recyclable paper will also be the only option we'll have so once that's the only op option i'll probably go with it maybe not before i don't know i don't i, I i've never you know got a hold of, of recyclable paper it's an awesome idea though okay right so the other question uh from t as well so t you're like asking a lot of questions, please calm down. Um, well, she asked like, how many avocados did you get in order to get that big basket that you showed, Billy? Please a tell lot, us. a lot. You know, I purchased it with my, I have a friend who owns a grocery store. And, you know, from time to time, he gets like, you know, these awesome, you know, offers of avocado. He sells to sushi places. So, you know, yeah, they were like 50 avocados. I, I, it, was, it was interesting. I thought I would never, you know, be sick of avocado, but I, you know, I made it. Yeah. I, I, I reached a point where I could no longer eat avocado for a while. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> I, I mean, I actually, I personally would love to, to, to reach that point where I'm like, I cannot no. see an avocado, but, you know. It's... I'm a lucky one. I'm a lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> okay so if you guys don't have any further questions i'll proceed to say goodbye uh, and thanks obviously thank uh, thank you so much billy for the presentation and everybody who's here for participating for your time uh, and we all hope that you enjoy it and you're all able to talk when mati and mute everybody uh, you can actually unmute yourselves so if you want to thank billy if you want to comment or ask anything now is your time so thanks guys thanks, thanks billy we loved it thank you thank you thank you so much thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.